do we need to know or we just generally you talk to this but okay okay because i see we got this one here talk to each other okay, okay. these two will be focused on you guys sweet Trying not to slouch down to your level too much, but <laughs> I don't want to be like standing up above you. I'm trying not to look too skinny. Yeah. <laughs> you hear him? I'm trying not to slouch down to your level. What? <laughs> hey, look, there we are. Hey, I'll take that. <laughs> what, it's like a 15 second delay? It's cutting off the TV a little bit. Yeah, the TV's cut off on the side. Is that right? That's okay, because that doesn't even pass your way. So. Oh, right, that one will. Yeah. Okay, also, if somebody comes in and we're going to demo something handheld, sure. then I might grab this camera and come up. If, if it's not working well with that one, I might grab that one and come into the set with it. Okay, cool. And will that display on the monitor behind us? No. Oh, okay. So this would be just me, like, getting up. Sure. Oh, we're live? We got yeah, we are. Hi. Can they hear us too or just see us? Yeah. Yep. Sweet. Hey. I know. I feel like we actually we haven't used the chat room forever since the uh, Q&As and Hangouts are working so well. Yeah, and it gets better and better every yeah. time too. And that like, the interaction is way better too. The other, well, the only other problem with the chat room here is the delay. Mm -hmm. Chat. Well, there's like two or three minutes. Well, there's like the video delay and then the chat room delay and then. It shouldn't be two or three minutes. It should be like ten seconds. No, it's two or three minutes. It looks. We're watching. <laughs> we're watching it live. We see twenty seconds or so. Well, yeah, yeah, that was it, it. was like thirty seconds, maybe. Yeah. Oh, I guess I just. That's about it. normal. Well, that works. Mm. Ah. Ooh, nice, oh, lower, that looks good. nice lower third. That's cool. Yeah. Especially because it <laughs> hides my shape. Cuts off your lower more. third. Yeah, you got to slouch a little. I need a box to stand on. I, I'm, I'm already slouching. I mean, hell. Oh, I hear an iPhone. <laughs> so what's going on, chat room? How are you guys? Somebody named Alex Doby says, hi, Phil. Cutting my head off now. Oh no, no, we're not. Kim's just messing with us now. Richard. <laughs> As you just rub your belly there. I think so. I'm not. Yeah. Any questions? Um. Hold, have, hold me. We have little direction. Yeah. Do you need to run an intro or anything first, or are we just going? He's going to open with the buffer, I think. Where did I put? Hang on, we need the SDC page back. No. no. Like the actual SDC page. That'll work too. Top result. Or Australian scrolling. Just because we need. Oh, this Chromebook is so slow. Just because we need stories. Yep. So it's starting here. Okay. Oh, wait, starting um, there. I guess you want to yell at us when your bumper's done? Yeah. Since we can't see it live? Yep. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Android Central Live. So <laughs> this is new and exciting and different for us. We are live in San Francisco at the, uh, the Weston St. Francis at the Samsung Developers Conference. It is Samsung's first developers conference, so we figured we'd try something a little different this time. We've got Andrew Martinick with us. Hey guys, how's it going? We all know Andrew from the podcast as well. I'm Phil Nickinson, editor of AndroidCentral.com. So 
we do our podcast every week, and we figure, well, let's set up shop here in San Francisco and stream live from the, uh, from the event. So that's what we are doing. And we're going to do three hours off and on today and another three hours tomorrow. We'll probably have a little more to talk about today, I think. Yep. Uh, just because we had the keynote this morning. And the way it's going to work is we're going to talk amongst ourselves for a little while. Mm -hmm. And uh, later this afternoon, we're going to bring in uh, some very special guests. In fact, I don't even know who they are yet. So special, so exclusive, we have no idea who they are. But we'll the keep funneling through them. And, you know, they're going to be Samsung people, industry people. Crackberry Kevin, you know, whoever feels like talking. Basically, we have no idea who's coming, so it's kind of all our coworkers trolling us, and this could get real exciting real quick. <laughs> so we'll, we'll find out. So uh, you want to start with, we had a keynote this morning, and as far as right. keynotes go, I mean, it was decent. It ran a little long, got started a little late. You know, yep. these things happen. Uh, but let's you know, talk about the big strokes. Some of the stuff we saw before, some of it was brand new. What was probably your favorite part out of the whole thing? I think... Um, out of the whole thing, I mean, Samsung's really pushing the multi-screen, uh, both for gaming and entertainment. You know, they have all their crazy OLED TVs, the smart TVs. Everything, Dude, everything is connected. The 55-inch curved OLED they had here today was, oh, it was And it just floats in that big easel yeah. where it's just only $9,000. Only $9,000. Not bad at I'll, all. I'll take two. So the, the big thing is it without any additional accessories or anything, you're gonna be able to throw content around between your tablet, your TV, uh, so you can get extra information on the TV, or uh, you know, they show displaying tweets, displaying game scores on top of live TV. That's the stuff that gets me most excited. Throwing content to a TV is not new. We've done right. that for a while. Samsung's done that for a mm -hmm. long time with AllShare, but, but what's new is it's not just mirroring your display. You're actually taking information from the phone or your tablet throwing it up almost in like a sidebar on the yeah, TV. Yeah. I'm back and forth on that. Like it looked really cool. It was it looked easy. It was quick and it was displayed nicely on the TV. When I'm sitting there on my couch with an adult beverage in hand, I want to watch what it is I want to watch. I right. don't necessarily want all this junk on the TV. Now, maybe I'm just getting old. I don't know. Well, I think that the, the most interesting thing for me was uh, they showed the sports example, the soccer mm -hmm. soccer game going on. You pull up the live scores of the other games, and you tap a live score in the game, and it'll ch switch the channel to that game. And then you'll pull up stats. You can ask questions of different people. You can invite people to video conference with you and watch the game with you. And actually, the example they had was you were watching something else and said, oh, I want to check right. the score on my phone. Oh, now I want to go watch that right. game, and it all just kind of circled back together. I mean, because otherwise, you're not going to be watching a game where they're showing more scores right. than pulling in even more scores. I mean, so yeah. some of this is going to have to get worked out, I think. Yeah, but, some of the interface stuff is going to have to work out because they're showing a lot of overlays, and you know, uh, you, news programs or whatever are already showing a ticker at the bottom right. and different graphics and things like that. So where they position that on the screen is going to be important. Like it's going to be uh, information overload really quickly. The other, the other really interesting thing I think was Twitter. Twitter mm -hmm. has easily solidified itself as the way to get information live right. at this point, and they've done an incredible job of that. Uh, interesting seeing Samsung bring them on stage because it's, it's kind of a this symbiotic relationship. Right. But at the same time, it's like, oh, that's the last thing I want to watch. You know, when, when I'm watching The Walking Dead, you've already got right. so much extraneous stuff on TV. It'll be really interesting to see how it plays out and how much people are actually using it. And we're not going to have that answer today. We're not going to no, have that answer no, next month. No, absolutely not. And you know, people. You know, you get the dedicated fans when there's a, uh, you know, a season finale or something going on where everybody is watching Twitter. They're seeing what their friends have to say. Um, so for those dedicated people, you know, do you really want Twitter overlaying on your season finale, uh, you know, experience, or do you want to be staring down at your phone and not catching the screen? It's kind of it's kind of hard to strike the balance. But I think if they do it right. The right, you know, the core set of people that really love that two-screen uh, experience with Twitter are gonna eat it up. And it's important because the tech is there, right? They're, right. they're getting it all worked out. Name of the, the name of the game today was SDK by mm -hmm. far. They released yeah. five new SDKs or announced them anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, you know, let's just dive through them here. You know, TV obviously the biggest. I think right. that's. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They they made the play about the fact that they're in an interesting position. Samsung. Uh, has a huge market share in mobile and TVs. Uh, you know, they said they're selling, you know, one TV every two seconds on average or something like that. One million mobile devices a day. Right, and when you throw those two numbers together, you're talking about, you know, a huge install base of smart TVs that, you know, no additional hardware required, just hook it up to the internet 
and you're connecting your devices. So the five SDKs we're talking about, the multi-screen SDK, that's what we've been talking about right, right. here. Um, the Samsung Mobile SDK, uh, 10 individual packages, uh, S Pin, you know, we've talked a lot, and that SDK has been out for a while. We were kind of a part of that with the contest last mm -hmm. year when they did that media control, professional audio, gestures, all in one SDK. Right. Um, 800 APIs in that, I believe they said. Mm -hmm. Uh, Multi-screen gaming SDK. Now that's one right. we actually saw in Berlin uh, in early September. I was there, mm -hmm. and they've got a really nice controller, and you just slap your phone on top right. of it. Not right. unlike a Moga controller, if you've used that. Um, but that and that works very nicely. Right, and then you can broadcast that to other devices as well. Yeah, think of it almost like an Nvidia Shield, only separate. So mm -hmm. a lot of really cool things right. being done in that space. Uh, the TV SDK, and then the Knox SDK. Knox is one of those things. It's still Unless you live in the enterprise space, and you and I don't, yeah. it's a little hard to wrap your mind around, and, and those who love to buy phones to hack them kind of load this stuff. Right, exactly. And, but for those who are in the enterprise situation, and they don't like carrying two devices, two you know, separate devices with different operating systems or something, uh, Samsung is really trying to say, one device, we can silo the enterprise apps, we can silo all your data, and you know, and they, they came at it from the business's side of you to keep all of your emails safe, keep your data safe. You know, your phone gets, the employee's phone gets stolen, you don't lose your data. Too. Right. And I mean, that's not going to become less important anytime soon. Right. It's, it's not sexy. I get that. Right. Um, you know, for those who like to hack their phones, I get that it's a pain in the butt. And yep. It's something you have to work around or break or keeps you from doing what right. you want to. But from a, a consumer slash enterprise space, it, it's super important. Right, absolutely. Um, probably the other thing that I was most enthusiastic about, I'll say, is um, the ability that, look, they basically have Samsung's version of Chromecast. Yeah, um, built looks in, very similar. It's already built into the TV, now they're building it into the SDK, so uh, applications can add this Samsung functionality. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not per device, right? It's You don't have to have a Note 3. It's going to work on an iPhone. It's going to work on other right. Android phones. They use Pandora as the example today. And again, so, they're, they're talking SDK. They're saying anybody can make apps for this. You just plug into the APIs, yep. and it's already in all the smart TVs. And you know the Pandora example was perfect, and it's not... Uh, it's not unlike Chromecast at all. The, the button looks similar. The dialogue looks similar. It pops up. You were you going a, nuts. You were, a selection. You were saying, this looks just like Chromecast. I, I said, <laughs> the button literally looks the exact same. And I go, it, it really looks like it. It says living room TV. And you hit the button, and you're getting a view on the TV of now playing. But mm -hmm. then on your phone, you're getting control of you know pause, play, next track thumbs up, thumbs down, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's a two-way street. It, I, I believe they said that you could use the remote also on the TV. So it's talking back and forth. It's not just a dumb display. It, it, and I love the idea because it's already built into the TV. There's right. no dongle you have to add to it and no plugging in via USB. I know that was a big pain yeah. for people. It really broadcast. kicks up the magic factor of, you know, your t they're already pushing you to have your TV connected to your home network. It's, you know, could be because it's a smart TV. So they're saying, get your device, load this app, and wow, you can just throw it to and the that, TV. But, and that's the catch. You've got to have a Samsung smart right. TV. I just bought a relatively new Samsung mm -hmm. TV. Well, it's not relatively new. It's new for me, right. but it's not smart. Right. Uh, it doesn't connect to the internet at all. Mm -hmm. Although it has a software update feature, which is just weird. I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I'm not going to be able to use that. Yeah. But you know, Chromecast still works just fine. Samsung has alternatives. Right. Um, it'd be really interesting because to me, I think I still think that's the way to do it. Instead of streaming things, we've talked about this right. how many times. Exactly. Instead of using your phone or your tablet to do the heavy lifting, it's the, the appliance is doing it for you. And everybody's doing something different. You know, HTC has their own media link thing. We're seeing Chromecast, but. Nothing's really caught on too much. You know, we've seen uh, you know Miracast streamers and things like that. Nothing's really caught on. So Samsung, like we said, with the uh, install base of TVs, they you know they're kind of in a position to jump out ahead uh, if they really take it head on, like they say they will. And I think we need to reiterate how important it is to not just only be on one phone, two right. phones, one tablet, or even just Samsung phones, mm -hmm. but, but that it's built into the TV and the application, mm -hmm. and it's not hardware specific. To me, that's huge. Right. These apps still, we want to be able to you know, get the Pandora app from Google Play and not be a special version that's preloaded on some devices. Right. Uh, you know, that can really hurt it in the early stages. What do you think about this one stat we got? They say, Samsung says it's selling one million mobile devices a day. Try to wrap your head around that for a minute. I'll wait, you go ahead. 
One million. That's a lot. Of, that, that's a lot of zeros. That is a whole and lot of zeros. What they didn't break down, and what we kind of uh, got some insight into with the latest uh, Samsung earnings, is those are a lot of mid and low range devices. Mm -hmm. And you know, how is that experience? You know, the, this wasn't one million Galaxy S4s. Right. I, it was a lot of Galaxy S4s and Note threes and Note twos. I'm and sure. Three still. I, exactly. But you know, how many of those devices are in what? price class, you know, you have to expect that's a lot of mid-range stuff it, too. And actually that's a lot of what their their message is, is that we are number one in, you know, pick a demographic, pick a segment right. of this market, we are probably number one. In right. It. And, and that's a big deal. $99 unlocked devices all the way up to $700 I mean, unlocked. You, you can say what you want about Samsung phones, whether it's your favorite, you know, manufacturer or right. not, but you can't deny those numbers. They, there's just... That is a buttload of No, prices. exactly. Any manufacturer would be happy to take that. Any manufacturer would probably be happy with half of that. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of why we're here. Um, you know, it's, it's Samsung's first developer conference. Right. And, and, you know, maybe not as consumer focused as, uh, as you might otherwise see us right. at. But yeah, but it's still important to see when a company as big as Samsung is saying indie developers, you know, small groups, one person, two people, come make these apps, you know, they're talking about, uh, they're in a keynote, talking about the number of libraries, uh, you know, in their SDK and how yeah. many APIs are available. Like, you don't see those. Those are normally in little small events that are, you know, are regular meetings with these developers. They're not huge events with you know, thousands of people at them. Well, let's do this because I'm not a developer. I think we all know that. I can, no. bar I can barely stand here and put two sentences together. Let's bring uh, Michael Ludden over. Michael, we've known for a long time at the site why don't you come on this side? We'll scoot over here. And uh, how are you, hey, sir? How are you doing? Good so you were up you. on stage with the. Yep. Good to see you. Sorry. That's how it's going to be. Huh? Whoa. Whoa. It's okay. Whoa. It's been a long day. No. So Michael, <laughs> Michael, we've known for a long time, and then uh, you hopped over to Samsung a couple years ago. Now? Yeah, I used long? to do the HTC. Yeah. Yes, that's my dirty secret. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so what the hell are you doing here, man? Putting this show on, yeah. hoping it goes, hoping it stays together, right? Yeah, hacking it together essentially. So, I mean, let's walk it through. How long? How long have you guys planned this? This is your first developers conference. Well, that's one of the reasons I actually came to Samsung was to help this conference actually happen and kind of try to unify Samsung for the world of developers with one message, which is not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. right. So many different divisions. There's mm -hmm. you know smart TV. There's mobile. Those are the two obvious ones. There's refrigerator. There's connected refrigerator. There's right. like you know, connected devices that sit underneath your TV, like HomeSync. Mm -hmm. um, there's all sorts of different shapes and sizes of PCs and tablets and this and that. And so what do we actually have on offer to developers? First, there's like a requirements gathering phase where we had to figure out, okay, what do we actually do and what are developers going to be interested in? And then we had to get everybody on board in, uh, inside Samsung, which has a lot of different business units around the world. And, right. um, so it's been a long time planning and I'm actually really, really relieved that it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend for a second that Andrew here is a developer because he looks a little more of the part than definitely. Me. Yeah, but why? But in reality, I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean about yeah. you. But you know, say, yeah. say Andrew's on the fence about coming. Okay. I take to, it as a compliment. Okay. Yeah. Say Andrew's on the fence about coming to Samsung Developers Conference because there are lots of DevCons cons out there. Right? Yeah. We, we all right. go to Google I/O. There's some of the smaller is the uh, Android DevCon con that, right. that right. happens two or three mm -hmm. times a year. Yeah. Why should Andrew come to this one? So the reason to come to SDC is because Samsung is for the first time putting on offer pretty much everything we have to do with developers on one stage. Not only that, we've got like a ridiculous amount of giveaways over the course of the next right. couple of days. The show floor tomorrow is kind of ridiculous with the amount of things being mm -hmm. given away. The ticket price is pretty low compared to tier one conferences like this, like you mentioned other ones, mm -hmm. right, right, from other manufacturers and whatnot. Um, and I mean, we announced the Note 8 giveaway today, so everybody get, here is getting a $400 mm -hmm. piece of hardware for their $299 right. ticket. So I mean, just from a, a sheer value perspective, it's more than worth your money. And then of course, what you're gonna learn with our over 50 sessions, um, and it's not just Samsung, right? We're bringing out some of the mm -hmm. best teachers across Android, the web cross-platform. There's lots of partners involved. Um, it's, it's really kind of exciting. It's definitely worth, worth the price of admission from a number of different angles. So that's what I'd say. So you heard Andrew and I talking about what we thought about the keynote this morning and, and what we saw. I actually didn't, I didn't hear that. I just Pretend you did me. for a okay. second. Yeah. What, what would you say, and we're, you know, we're less Debbie and more consumer focused. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the folks who don't know code right. and, and don't worry about SDKs, yeah. what should they look out, you know, from coming out of dead, uh, SDC. Yeah. What, what should they expect to see in the next year or two, you know, building out of all this? Well, I think we, we, we hinted at it, right? A lot of multi-screen stuff. A lot of yeah. stuff between your Android phone and your smart television. You saw, there's actually a screen called the multi, uh, a team called the multi-screen team. Mm -hmm. 
that specifically works on getting stuff from any mobile, from, from iOS, Android, Blackberry, Windows Phone, whatever it is, the web, just the web, to right. your TV as content overlay to help you interact with like a smart TV platform. Um, you're gonna see a lot more convergence, a lot more of our uh, integrated ecosystem happening over the course of the next several years. Obviously I'm wearing you know, one of our, our emerging <laughs> devices and that connects yeah. with my Galaxy S3 phone. Um, and so you'll see a lot more of these SDKs that take advantage of trying to figure out how these devices actually communicate with each other mm -hmm. and make it a little bit more, more seamless. Right. Um, and, the, and the keynote was designed to kind of speak to that, talk about some of the early stage investment we do as Samsung, talk a little bit about enterprise, um, and, and of course, it, trying to pack all that, and we went egregiously over. <laughs> yeah, I you hope, were the uh, last one on stage, and you tried to kind of shorten it up. Everybody yeah. was ready to get out of there. Yeah, I was, I was ready to let them get out. Um, <laughs> I did. Want, it was so fun to make people pretend like there was something under their seat. Every, everybody literally went down. It was, it was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. Um, I think we got a little bit of hint, and, and as you said, not just Samsung, not just Android, but a, a little bit of hint. Uh, it felt to me like Samsung's starting to break out a little bit, and, and not yeah. just... Your, right. This stuff is only going to work with our devices, and I'm excited about that because right. that's been a, a big complaint of mine. It's like yeah. Samsung can make great stuff. Yeah. I don't necessarily want to go all Samsung all the time. Right, mm -hmm. right, and 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 you know some of the things just by nature of what we can actually control mm -hmm. has to do with our own products. So of course things are going to be vertically integrated. But Samsung really, it's it's this is at least what I wanted for this conference is to have a more open feel right. maybe than some of the other conferences mm -hmm. out there. Right. So we wanted to include partners. We wanted to include frenemies, we wanted to include people that are, because it's really hard to avoid competition in right, this space right. when you're doing so much different stuff. So to the extent that we could, that's the way you're developer friendly, right? You, mm -hmm. you, you, you cast a wide net and you invite as many people in to play and Samsung's really kind of all been, always been about, a little bit more about choice than, than right. not choice, right? <laughs> so you've been pretty instrumental in setting this whole thing up? Yeah, this is my baby. How many people, in, because they probably won't get the credit they deserve, how many other people behind oh the scenes? Yeah. There's dozens, dozens of people. There, yeah. there, there were 20 plus people working on it locally. There were 30 plus people working on it from HQ. We've got the buy-in from some of our key executives. Um, all the agencies that worked on this, there were maybe six different agencies between the PR agencies. Wow. And, um, the, the, I mean, it's just an insane event to try to move a corporation to do something like mm -hmm. this. And so, yeah, so many people are not gonna get credit. The people on my team, um, that really helped with this. So, uh, would I'd, you like to have them check under their seats now? Yeah, please check under your seats at home. <laughs> I actually creeped. I snuck into your house day. while exactly. you were sleeping. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm not, there's like six cameras here. I'm not sure which one to look at at any given time. No, just pick one and, okay. and we'll switch they to it. Pick cool. one, they're, they're looking at you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, how many people would we decide were here? 1,500? 1, yeah, there were around 1,400 yeah. people total. I think Gregory Lee quoted about 1,300 at the beginning. That was conservative. They're yeah. definitely over not that. Not bad and for a first year, would you it say? It is not bad. Actually, we still, yeah, we for some reason we still have registration open. Actually, I have to go talk to them about <laughs> that after this. But um, yeah, big, big second day with a ton of stuff at the different booths and a lot more giveaways. So. There's more to come, yeah, more announcements so, as well. So tomorrow's going to be more sessions. Um, there's sessions, actually like a show floor with booths. Show floor, 28 different booths. Um, 18 of those are uh, some of our, our sponsors, some of the, the who's who of the tech industry, and most of them are giving away things, so it's definitely worth it. We have Android back. Central Live. Android yeah. Central Live. Ish. Not also happening tomorrow. I'm also happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three hours again tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to yeah. be blind by these lights. And of course, you guys. Exactly. You guys yeah. live streamed our, uh, our keynote. We, I mean, yep. There's yep. so many. Thank you so much. For You're that, welcome. By the way. You're welcome. Great. Oh. The least we could do. <laughs> No, I think that turned out well. Well, thank you very much for stopping yeah, my by. My pleasure. And, uh, See you guys. We'll do it again. Okay, can I can I reach across the? Yes. Yeah, there yes. you go. Don't fend me off. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Or as we say wow. in the podcast. Mm, so that was so that was the keynote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that was that. Um, yeah, I mean that was I think pretty succinct of, of what yeah. we're seeing here. Um, I mean. I'm not going to take that much home that like I can actually do anything as a consumer. I can do a lot. Right. Of it. Devcons are, are like that though. Exactly. Right? They they prefaced a lot of the different speakers at the um, at the opening keynote. And said, okay, this is going to get geeky, and we're going to talk about APIs and SDKs. But uh, anybody who kind of looks a little farther down the road can say, okay, I could see how this could be interesting and how this could turn into a presentation where, right. you know, we have the heads of different departments coming up and doing a product demo that really shows off a brand new application that somebody that's at SDC right now, you know, developed and it'll be coming out in a few months. I think it's worth mentioning no new hardware was announced today or anything, nope. no Galaxy nope. S5. 
<laughs> no, nope. no Note 6 or whatever and, we're up and to. And that's, that's refreshing because this is about the platform and about, you know. Like, and not about some new toy. Right, exactly. Yep. Expanding that, that net to, you know, include all kinds of people to get uh, interested in just developing things that happen to integrate with Samsung products. I know we're all waiting for a Nexus announcement. Are you a little <laughs> surprised Google didn't troll Samsung a little bit and announce it right in the middle of this thing? I uh, thought about it. I thought hard about to say it. if they were act actively thinking about that or if it was at all possible in the first place, mm -hmm. but that certainly uh, would have thrown a wrench in our plans. Um, what else? I mean, we're starting to see, I'm looking through right. everything we've gone through today. I mean, we're starting to see individual app announcements that, mm -hmm. you know, different developers are saying, hey, we've announced this right. at, at DevCon, so we've got posts up on that. Mm -hmm. Um, they showed off the big ones like Pandora's coming, uh, the new version of Twitter on the note is preloaded. We talked about that before, but, um, yeah, our, you know. our, our old friend, Michael Ducker, who's been a, you know, a, a friend of the sites long before mobile nations existed right. as mobile nations way back in the visor central days, Marcus Adelson is here, uh, mm -hmm. helping us with all this. And he ran the show, he and Dieter Bowen back then. So, uh, so Michael's been around for a long time and he's with mm -hmm. Twitter now and, and really nice, uh, explanation of, of how Twitter fits into all yep. this with the SDKs. Right, right. It was fun for me to see some of the action memo stuff. Mm -hmm. Every time that gets demoed, it, it gets a little better where, you know, you take a note and you write down an address yeah. and it translates it. Yeah, it, we didn't talk about that demo. That was a real estate demo mm -hmm. with uh, Zillow, Zillow and Trulia, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, open up or just take out your the pen on the note, you know, write down an address. It opens it in hit one the, button it says oh i recognize your handwriting i'm going to open it up in google maps or whatever other app has tied right. into it with the sdk and then you can hover over addresses to get yep. more information a couple taps you send it and off this, write a note this is all stuff you can get now this is right. stuff you can get on the note 3 and on the gs4 or mm -hmm. not on the gs4 but on the note 3 and the uh, note 10.1 10.1 the new mm -hmm. the note 10.1 2014 edition there you go with a hyphen how do you do parentheses air parentheses 2014 right. edition Perfect. Yeah. Yep. it's a horrible name guys um, but that's else? a great example yeah. of the kind of stuff that can be happening. Right, and so that's what they're showing developers here. Here's how you can do all this cool stuff with our stuff. They showed a cool uh, air hockey demo yep. with two tablets together that you just uh, set them next to each other and slide your fingers together and it automatically pairs them yeah, and connects cool. for a that was multiplayer not, game. That was really interesting. Not unlike what Google had showed with um, the Nexus 7s. Right, with uh, playing so, so we're starting to see more multiplayer. of that. Yeah. Um, I think that's Let's see. that might be it for kind of our little that's kind intro of wraps podcast. up the keynote, really. Yeah. Um, you know, the sessions were packed today. We actually got shut out yeah. when there were so many people. We went in up there. there and there was already turning away people, you know, filling up rooms with hundreds of people already. So they're clearly excited. Yeah. So we might take a break for a couple minutes here and mm -hmm. then we'll uh, come back and we'll start pulling people in, I imagine, I suppose. Yep. We'll bring a couple more people in, run through it. We got hours and hours more to go. We do. It's weird doing a podcast without the music. Because if I dance, it's going to look funny. So, all right, I well, that's agree. it. We'll be back in a little bit. Thanks, guys. All right. No, it's it's three forty. That was 25, 25 minutes. Now we should have brought you on. That would have been another. Oh, this is starting from the beginning. Yeah. Do that later. You can do me as a straight interview. Yeah, no, that's Something, what we'll do. You, know, you can do straight interviews. Whether you post them after or not. <laughs> I need some. What's that? Probably. Okay. Might as well not switch it now. Yeah. I need some water. Did it fix Andrew's lower third? Renee was complaining that it said it never achieves the ball. Oh, really? We're, we're co editors in chief. That works, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Those are to hand out to anybody. Yes. I didn't know they were in the shop. Okay. Put them anywhere and put them anywhere and hand them out to anybody that wants them. I didn't even open it. We didn't look at, we were looking at our. Yeah, I, I think it will. It will once we have somebody to talk to. Yeah, no. no, we were looking at our page to see our posts from the keynote. I would assume, like, as soon as we have somebody up that we, like, need bullet-pointed information about will be useful. You want to do the first one?
Hmm? You want to do the first one? The first uh, talk? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I don't care. Who do we got? I don't know. I think that'll work a little better just so it's like I think we're gonna get tired if it's both of us just babbling the whole time. Mm -hmm. Give the other one a little break. It could have been worse. Hello. Neither did I. You got Oh, well that happens. We're on top of it. Okay, it's really loud in here. I'll talk to you in a bit. Really? Andrew's going to do the first one. I'm not sure who's going first. Well, we have multiple people coming on. Is this mic still on? Is that a problem? Uh, people are saying mics are still on.
because we're not developers. So right. Like, so much I'm going to get out of it anyway. I want to sit in on some of the TV stuff. Yeah. Like the, the Pandora E thing. Yes, like yeah, that's, no, totally. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. cool. Yeah, I was talking with him earlier, Tom earlier. Um, if you have a chance tomorrow to see um, uh, Christian Highland speak mm -hmm. from Mozilla, he's one of the best speakers. He's awesome. I, 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 I first met him at a conference like five years ago, but he's seriously, anytime you can ever see him speak, he's great. What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. Oh, yeah, James can talk to us. Where is that? Oh, excellent. Hang out, yo. This is not the fastest Chromebook in the world. I was going to say. Like we were talking about something earlier, and I opened it up, and it took about two minutes for the page to load. Oh. But it is a really nice choice that it's the Samsung. Yeah. You almost think that's yes, by design. Yes, it is. Talk into my boobs. Talk into your boobs. Hello. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want to talk about, by the way? Multi-screen SDK. Okay. If that's cool with you. Is that all you want to talk about? I can talk about anything. No, you... We, uh, anything you want to talk about, I'm cool <laughs> with. Like, genuinely, we can... We can talk about Apple earnings if we want to. That's fine. No, your audience might not yeah, like that. Yeah, our host probably might not like okay, that. Okay, everybody ready? I'm going to give you a count. Okay. Okay, thank Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to the Samsung Developers Conference. This is Android Central Live. This is Christina Warren from Mashable. I am Phil Nickinson from Android Central. Christina, how are you? I'm, I'm awesome. I'm you're, awesome. You're like one of those, I, I, I need a better name. You're like one of those four-month friends, like friends I see every four months or yes. so at, at events. I, I, yes, exactly. I like to say like conference friends. I need a better, that's a better name than four-month friend. But you're, you're dead on. We always run into each other at shows. Mobile World Congress, we yep. saw each other at... Uh, I can't remember the last thing we saw each other. We, we run into each other at these things a lot. They kind of blend in. Yeah. And actually, I was going to tell you a minute ago, like some of the stuff we've seen here at Samsung was some of the stuff we saw at IFA in Berlin a month ago. Um, so what has been kind of your favorite thing you've seen so far? It's day one. We've had the keynote. We've had a couple sessions. So not too much to pick from yet, but. I love the multi-screen SDK. Yeah. Uh, I think that I'm a big proponent of the second screen and, and the multi-screens and using apps and the TV run context-based stuff to be able to give you, you know, information on your phone that might be different than what you see on your TV, mm. creating template experiences, that sort of stuff. And I thought that that was great. I love that they're taking kind of what Google and Netflix sort of dial and kind of going to the next level. I was talking with Tom from Pandora earlier and he was talking about how they really like it because they can execute stuff and, and really build these full, you know, compliant, web-compliant apps for the TV that execute on the TV but can still be controlled and, and interacted with from the phone. I think there's a ton of, of opportunity there, especially when you start thinking about maybe even going to things where like I record video on my phone and I fling it at the TV and then I can interact with that content are we in gonna, real time. Are we going to get to the end of the week where I'm going to be okay with watching TV and holding a phone like right here? Because I don't do that now. I don't want you don't. to. I want to like just veg out and, and watch what I'm watching. See, what I find that I usually do is I veg out, I watch what I'm watching, but I usually have my phone or my tablet out too, and I'm surfing around, you know, I'm on the web, I'm playing Candy Crush Saga. I'm probably doing it more than I think. Yeah, I you know, I, I would say you probably are. I mean, that's the thing. One thing that I find that's really aggravating a lot of times is, you know, the the TV uh, episode of electronic programming guides are mm. terrible. Yeah, and oh, yeah. Even when they try to get better, they're terrible. And so even just having something as simple as being able to have in one great interface, being able to control and watch programming mm. to you know pick it on your tablet or your phone and then fling it over to the TV even that to make it more seamless than it is right now would be great because I have a I have a pretty um, nice NAS set up and I have a, a pretty extensive home media server set, set up but not everybody can do that and so I can do that with DLNA and I can do that with you know Wi-Fi direct and some other things mm. but if you don't want to do that stuff just be able to have the SDK built into these apps which we all use anyway right. I mean that's one thing that I found that's really interesting is that I used to have and I still do so much local content mm -hmm. but I don't access it that much anymore most of what I'm watching is from cloud-based services and so you know I'm watching from Hulu from Netflix you know from Amazon right. um, whatever you know Google Play Apple whatever and so if you could access that sort of thing and just be able to have it processed and delivered directly from the TV, you know, you don't even have to worry so much about the local content store, because that's where most of us get our stuff anyway. If you had to pick one pain point through all this, because, and I, I was telling Michael Ludden from Samsung a minute ago that it was nice to hear anyone from Samsung say, we want this stuff to work on multiple devices, on multiple platforms, on yeah. multiple phones, not just Samsung. To me, that was, I, I've, 
always hated when it's it's that vertical. Yeah. And I want to use it on something else. Maybe not all the time. Maybe sometimes on a Samsung device, but not always, right? Right. Not necessarily what I carry every day. Exactly. So what would you consider your biggest pain point for all this? What does Samsung have to fix? above all else. So I think the biggest thing is uh, making sure that the experience through the Blu-ray players or the other kind of ad, ad, ad hoc devices mm -hmm. can work as well. Because I think that starting with iOS and Android support, broad Android support is great. And that does, that's a really strong message saying that if people can start adopting this now. Uh, but the problem is, is that not a ton of people have 2012 or 2013 or 2014 Samsung TVs. Right. There are a lot of people who have Samsung TVs. They might even be smart TVs, but they're from 2010 or 2011. And they're not going to be able to use this stuff. So. You know, they're saying you can use a Blu-ray player. You could potentially use maybe their streaming box that they you know brought out. Mm. Although I, I don't think that they built built that with this in mind. But you know, coming up with some ways so that you can get that experience without having to buy a brand new television set. Home Homesick is still really new. So. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Homesick yeah. is still really new. And but I think even just if they can deliver the a comparable experience through a Blu-ray player or something else. Or honestly, I would love to see them talk to the console makers mm -hmm. and, and build like a, a Samsung app sort of in, into those platforms. Uh, I, I don't know how much it would serve Samsung per se, except to just get more people using the ecosystem. Because I think that the only way this stuff takes off, I mean, we've been trying to get apps on the TV for over a decade. Right. You know, I mean, the, the, the Yahoo was doing widgets on TV in like 2006, right? Like we've been doing this for a long time and it hasn't taken off, I think, because Everybody has a smartphone, and everybody knows you can build an app for that. Mm -hmm. But not everybody knows that you have the TV powerful enough to do it. So it's about getting enough penetration so that it's worth developers' time to actually play with this stuff. We're going to spend a lot of time on the front of the TV, I think, in the next five, 10 years. Do you think it's going to be too much? Can we get kids out? I've got two young kids. I have to struggle to get them outside. Yeah. And now I'm sitting here playing with all this stuff that keeps them inside a lot. I, I was going to say, I mean, you know, they learn from, <laughs> I learned from watching you, Dad. I learned from uh, watching you. Yeah, I know. It's um, horrible. I, I didn't really go outside a lot as a kid, so I can't really. Uh, no, but I, th I think we're going to have to do that sort of thing. Uh, but what's interesting is I think when you make it more contextually aware mm -hmm. and you can make those experiences more portable too, that makes it easier to go outside or be in other locations. And, and so that's the great thing about this too, right? And actually that was part of it, especially in the Pandora demo. It's, hey, I'm home. My phone knows it's in my house now. It knows I want to connect it to the entertainment center, not you know, kick out on headphones or something. Right. Exactly, and so you can have different uh, presets set up for those types of things. And I think you could potentially, you know, um, especially as content creators are becoming more liberal about letting people stream content in outside of the home and do things like that, mm -hmm. when you can start to maybe bring that content from the TV to your phone too and have a more seamless experience, then yeah, then when you go outside, you might not even notice that you need to watch TV, but when you have to catch that episode of, of, of whatever, you know, of Walking Dead, you know, you can. The smartphone wars are something we all love to talk about because we all have our fans. We all have, you know, as our readerships, right? We all have our iOS fans and yep. our Android fans. When you hear that Samsung is selling a million devices a day, does that change the equation in your mind any? Do you think maybe we've been lowballing it? Or? You know, so I think some people have. I certainly haven't. Yeah. I mean, to me, and, and this has been clear since the Galaxy S3, uh, probably honestly earlier than that, but I really started noticing with the Galaxy S3 mm -hmm. that the two main players are Apple and Samsung. And I've been saying for the past year, you know, that, that more people associate Android with, with Samsung than they do with Google. Yep. And that's just a fact. And I think the fact that they're selling a million devices a day is huge because you've got to also think this is across the spectrum. A lot of these are high-end devices, but a lot of these are lower-end devices. And more people are getting onboarded onto Samsung, onto this platform, than, or not Samsung, onto Android, than, uh, through them than anybody else. Right. And I, so I think that the, the problem then becomes, you know, for them, creating differentiations so that they can de get developers to take advantage of all of their extra bits, mm -hmm. which they're trying to do with things like this, and they're trying to do with some of their other SDK features. You know, they had the Twitter demo today, which was pretty awesome, you know, kind of the, the you know, the using the pen to, to tweet, which is cool things like that. Uh, but it's going to be a challenge to not just become, you know, you don't just write your app for Android, you write it with for Android, but with special bits for, for Samsung users. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that it's easy to kind of, um, overlook how big they are. And I think a million devices today really puts it in perspective. I mean, one of the things too, which is interesting about the TV space is that they have been the dominant player in TVs for the last five years, mm -hmm. um, at least. And, and they are so far and away bigger than their competitors. It's, it's kind of scary, you um, know? I, I think you do have to look at the numbers a little bit because Android is doing what? Is it 900,000 activa 900, activations a day? So if Samsung's selling a million devices, I mean, somewhere the math doesn't quite add up. So it's probably right. not all Android. No, it's probably not all so. Android. You know, but 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 it's also probably a pretty high mix. Right. You know, so but but you have, but honestly, yeah, that's right. When you think if Android's doing nine hundred thousand activations a day, Samsung's selling a million devices a day, then 
what does that say for everybody else? I think that becomes the bigger question. Not so much what does it say about Samsung. We've all known, I think, this big player. But what does that mean for your, your other companies? Any other manufacturer, and they all say, look, it's Apple, it's Samsung. There has to be a good number three, whether it's BlackBerry, yep. whether it's HTC, whether it's Windows Phone, slash Nokia. No, Nokia, it's yeah. Nokia it's, it's right. Exactly. And I, mean, I think that's, that, that's an interesting opportunity, too, right? And I think that there's an interesting space from some of the uh, Chinese companies and, and some of the companies in, in other parts of the world to really maybe usurp that space. But, but it's obviously great for Samsung because they're showing, hey, we're really freaking dominant. Who do you think is best positioned to be in that number three? You know... Put you on the spot here. Uh, Nokia, Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. Nokia, Microsoft. Because especially if they keep around the Asher brand, mm. then they're the, one of the only players that can sell in volume across the spectrum high to low. And uh, I think once you get the, the direct integration between hardware and software, right. that puts them in a really strong position With Windows, too. with Xbox. Exactly. And, and, and with, making the soft, with making the hardware now in-house too, mm. you know, um, by, by owning Nokia, uh, that, that becomes a, a really uh, powerful play. I would say it's weird. It's like if it weren't for the different, you know, security concerns over over China, you know, ZTE and Huawei would have a lot of potential because they sell a ton of phones mm -hmm. and they're making really good devices. I was just using the the uh, what is it, the Zumbia, yeah. uh, um, Zumio, whatever. Um, nice little device, mm -hmm. you know. But I think that their problem is going to be overcoming their their brand uncertainty. So yeah, I, I would say you know, Microsoft, Nokia is probably the best position for number three. Cool. Um, what else, what else, what else? That, I mean, that's a lot for day one, but yeah. it's still just day one. We still just day one. Tomorrow. We've got more stuff coming up. I mean, they're going to be focusing a lot of web standards. That's what I think is interesting about this conference is that right. they're very clearly trying to make this as accessible as possible. It's mm -hmm. not just about Samsung. It's not just about Android. They're trying to kind of make it. It doesn't feel like bigger. an indoctrination at all. It no, it really doesn't. doesn't. I mean, which honestly was impressive because sometimes you go to these things and they do. It feels like an indoctrination. Right. And this feels more like a more general uh, mobile developer conference that happens to have a focus on Samsung stuff. There, there are no chance of one of us. I mean, it's, it's really not been that scary at all. So we got to take a quick minute, I think, and talk about your shirt, because yeah. this is awesome. Veronica Mars, baby. Kickstarter special edition, if you see the back. Oh, I didn't see that. It says Kickstarter backer edition. Nice, yep. nice. It, uh, it came in right before I left New York to, to head to this, and, and I was like, I got to bring my shirt. <laughs> I was like, if there's any place I can wear my Veronica Mars shirt, it's a developer conference, right? I'm trying not to focus on your hat, too, but I'm from Florida, so I, I don't understand hats and gloves, and it's yeah. all very foreign to me. It's really hot under these lights, but I'm having a really <laughs> bad hair day, and so it just worked. I happened to have it packed. It just worked. <laughs> and everyone's been really complimentary, so I think I'm going to keep rocking for the rest of the day. It works. I'm not much for winter fashion. I'm not much for summer fashion. Even though you're Florida, man, so it's really hot there. Uh, yeah, most of the time. But you're Pensacola, right? Pensacola. So we get like two weeks of winter every year. A lot of rain every day. And a lot of rain every day, yeah. Then it, but then it stops and it's pretty again. You go to the beach and you're like, yeah, I'm going to go to the Gulf. Be on the beach on New Year's Day. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you, Good Phil. Good to see you. I'll see you in four months. See you, absolutely. See you later, conference buddy. All right, so we're going to take a break and uh, we will be back in a little bit with another special guest. I don't know. All right. Um, yeah. Hey, John. If he's going to have two people, which side do you want him on? Yeah. What would you prefer? You just stay on. We'll keep the hosts always over on this side. Sure. Okay. So, what's going on? Good to see you. Getting ready to bring on more guests. Talk more. Having to behave ourselves everything. like in between these. Okay. Yeah, drop <laughs> it right on there. Pay attention. It's, tough. it's like Big Brother. One, two, three, four, five. We have five cameras now? We have five cameras now. And more random snapshots happening from the distance. And we've got another interesting hat coming on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> more hats with ears. Let's see what the chat room's doing. Yeah, Christina does talk fast. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, Christina's awesome. That's why like, I, I keep telling my wife, I was like, I wish you could come to these things and just meet yeah. all these people that, mm -hmm. that I get to hang out with for two and three days at a time. A lot of cool people. Yeah. Yes, there's a delay in the chat room, everybody. Sorry. Nothing we can do about that. So what's up? We ready? Is my so, head cut off? Is that for real? No. Get off the set, Bill. Okay. Bye. It's okay, Bill. We'll all right. Can we, not, hey, can we uncut? Ken, do I need to mute this my or head? you mute it on your own? Okay. Okay. So we got another tall guy coming on too. Sure. And everybody rotate this way just a bit. Okay. There we go. 
How's that, Ken? Uh, two. Two. Who's that guy? Bright light in your face. Yeah, I'm getting used to it. I think it like shades. Seeing spots. Just don't look directly at. Oh. You'd be good. Uh, and don't worry about what camera you're talking to. They're going to switch. But um, pro gonna, you're products. Just talk to each other. Don't look at each worry. other. Right. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't worry about. Yeah. Just act like it's not there. But when I'm showing a product, it's to that camera. It's going to be going to that that yeah. can in there. See now I don't have to hunch down because no I know dude you've yeah, got exactly. you've got some you've got some height yeah. on you yeah a little bit you're gonna make me look I mean I want Phil <laughs> I want to look tall well, yeah, Phil Marcus down here I need and I was Phil I like, need you I mean not that you're you're short Phil you're you're tall well, you're just you're just, in the middle. just would, the right amount of tall I would tall. say Phil's like Phil's average average we're just above average I know this is like this is our um, this is our midget owner yeah <laughs> this is the little man Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Andrew. Cool. Just give me a kick. Bring us in with a with an opener. Hey, I'm Andrew. Welcome, Andrew. Sure. Are they gonna? Are, are we gonna do a little bumper and then? Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you. I'll give you a three, two, one. Hey guys, welcome back to Android Central Live at SDC 13. We've got a couple more guests for you we're going to talk to. We have Joel and Roger. It's good to see you guys again. They're from Cruiser Light, and they're going to talk to us a little bit about everything that's going on. Um, but first up, tell us a little bit about Cruiser Light. I'm sure everybody has kind of heard the name, but you can kind of give us a quick philosophy about what you guys are doing. So Cruiser Light's a very Android-centric company. We make uh, various cases with the, um, the bug droid on them mm -hmm. uh, for most all Android devices. We also did the Lloyd case right. for Android Central. We made some Central. Mobile Nations cases before for all the different devices. So you're not just Android, you're, you'll, you'll branch out a little bit. Right. right. So you guys, obviously you guys have some really cool stuff going on, but you have some most interesting, I've been looking at this one with the, uh, with the ghost bug droid on it. Uh, you guys want to highlight um, some of your most interesting stuff and you sure. know, for a Samsung device too. But Yeah, definitely. Uh, we are at Samsung Developers Conference, so it'd be wrong not to talk about a Samsung of course, device. Of course. So this is a new case we made um, called the Intelligent Cover for the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 3. And the, uh, the major advantage of that is it's got your, your card slots here. It uses the bug droid circuit design. And it just, it's overall very protective. I mean, I could easily drop it with little fear. Oh, he broke its fall. <laughs> My with it, uh, here, I got it, I got with it. it, with it of it, <laughs> right, of it right, breaking. Right. So it's just a, you know, all around excellent case. Then we've got, um, you want to you introduce yeah, this Yeah, we've one got um, basically our new polycarbonate cases. They utilize a polycarbonate case, UV printed artwork that comes in several different styles. We use artists yeah. from all around the world. This particular case is done by one of our Japanese artists, and it kind of has... Kind of appropriate for the Halloween time Exactly. Here. It's real appropriate. This is on my Note 3, so if you're big into Halloween like I am, it's a great way to not only support Android, but also the Halloween holiday. Right. And you know, one of the big pluses I just want to show about this is a lot of printed cases, you have it where the design can come off easily, and you can really just go at this sucker, and it's not going to affect it at all. There That's, you go. You wouldn't want to mess with that amazing art. Magic. Too. It's a piece of, of art. I mean, yeah, so. so. Not exactly. saying that you can't scratch it, but it is extremely it, scratch right. resistant. It's very durable. So Definitely. this is for the Note 3, but you do have a bigger version here as well. And then for the uh, for the Nexus 7, which is, you know, Google being a good partner of uh, the good folks at Samsung, I'm sure they can appreciate this. There you go. Just a, just a beautiful black and red case with, uh, you know, the ability to stand, nice credit card slot there, and then sweet wake functionality. Right, and I saw that one's got... This is kind of be a little wallet kind of situation. Yeah, the, definitely. Uh, slide your credit cards and stuff like that. So, you know, maybe in case you feel like carrying this out, you got big pockets or something. Sure, you can sure. Stuff a Nexus 7 2013 in there. <laughs> I, I don't I mean, know yeah, if that's no, really going to fit, but hey. Is it going to work? Let's, yeah, you know what? 
Uh, let's see. You got big pockets, maybe. Do I have big pockets? I it will. You know what? Not I have big, big uh, not big enough. He has big <laughs> enough pockets. Yeah, but, it might fit. But the Note 3 will fit. The Note 3 will fit for right. sure. But you guys, of course, you make cases of all shapes and sizes and colors right. and, you know, printed with giant Lloyds on the back and everything. Yeah, no. Yeah. You know, all I've sorts had them of for all different kinds of phones. So. Awesome. Yeah. No, we love your guys' cases and I'm sure, I mean, you, you guys know your demographics, but you have people all over the world. Um, you know, taking a look at this. So, um, but beyond just the hardware side, you know, I know you guys aren't developers, but what has you excited after seeing the keynote this morning, you know, talking to the people, you know, what what's kind of the feeling uh, from your guys' perspective? Well, you know, being out here, you just get to, you know, feel the pulse of the industry. You right. have you have a lot of the independent developers, and we've worked we've worked closely with a lot of them. We've worked with um, the guy from, uh, you've worked Steve Kondike, or Skondik, mm -hmm. from CyanogenMod. Yep. He was a former Samsung employee. And we, we've, we've actually, we've done a lot of custom printed cases for these smaller, um, uh, smaller community uh, projects like a Franco Kernel right. or, or other things like that. So, so just that's really cool. To, You'll run a small batch for, you know, that right. really says we're, we're willing to go down to the enthusiast market. Sure. We'll make something kind of one-off, kind of custom. Yeah, it's, it's not for profit because you're definitely going to take loss on it. Right. But it, it's more to, to show the community you care. Right, and that's cool because you're not going to get that with your regular off-the-shelf kind of cases at no. all. I, I don't think you would, no. Yeah, absolutely. So that's really interesting. Um, do you guys have any specific uh, apps or anybody you've talked to here that you're most interested about at SDC? Um, you know, we've, we've, had some, we've had some conversations. Uh, it's really hard to... It's really hard to pinpoint one thing. What about you, Roger? Me personally, I of course have the gear and right. I'm excited to see its future development. I mm -hmm. think it's a great starting off point, yeah. but I think it has much more potential and I'm excited to see just where we can take this. You know, we have such great developers here that I would really can't wait till they sink in and you know take this device to right. the next level. I oh sorry. Yeah, uh, oh no, that I, I reviewed the gear for our site yeah. and it's you know, even just right after it's been released, you know, and it only works with the Note 3, yeah. you can see the potential and you see yeah. cool stuff. You know, just in the couple of weeks that I had it, you know, yeah. you see new apps coming in, you see cool things happening. Yeah, so. I really think it's got, it's, you know, the first of its kind, and I think it will become really great down the road. It's, it's good now, but I think it could just be so much better right. with the support of the Android developers. Right. Have you pulled the trigger on a gear yet? You, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to win one, so. <laughs> there you go. Well, there's going to be giveaways, and, you know, yeah. I mean, there's plenty of people walking around, and you can at least try one, so. That's right. Well, that's right. right. Yeah, okay, yeah, try one. That's, yeah, that's exactly. That's, right. that's what you're you saying. You, you can at least give it a try, right? And we've been demiked, but that's oh. okay. We're going to fix that really that quick. Was, uh, that's okay. That happens. So I want to thank you guys for coming out. Well, thanks From for Cruiser Light, you have some really interesting stuff. And of course, is that going to be uh, on sale for anybody? Yeah, that's going to be available. These, these will all be available at cruiserlight.com as well as our Amazon store. And shop Android. And of shop course. Shop Android, of course. Exactly. All right, we want to thank you guys for coming out here. Thank you. All right, thank you for having and us. And we'll be back for a little more coverage here at STC 13. All right. Cool. Sorry I've about got, that. I've got to get rid No, that's cool. My uh cords. -huh. Get all your mics off and stuff like that. So I'm gonna have to make sure this one's dead because it's gonna get looped through my shirt here.
Becky and Amelia. Okay. Like, uh, like juicers and. We make juicers? Yeah, yeah. I want a juicer. Like, and they're giving my to those the whole time. Internet of <laughs> Things juicer. There was like an entire wall of connected ovens. <laughs> entire wall of connected ovens. It's been weird. What does a connected oven do? Does it email you when it's yeah, done? Yeah. Okay, that it's makes like, sense. I know LG has some. I remember seeing at Samsung headquarters when I was on the tech tour, no, the media tour, a fridge that would weigh your milk to tell you how much milk you have left and then text you when you need more milk and stuff like that. I just look at the milk. That's true. But who wants to do that? Right. I got black. I liked orange. The orange was white's pretty hot, actually. You know, orange really grows on you. Yeah. Orange was what I was wearing. I, I like the orange. But my orange wasn't waterproof yeah. yet. I think so. I might be. Try now. Can you hear me now? Should I leak something good? I'll make some news. <laughs> make something up. Yeah. Nexus 6. Well, we've got uh, our KitKat <laughs> phones launching in six hours, so stay tuned for that. It's 420. Shout out to Laura June. <laughs> I think so. All right, let the hotness begin. He's going to do like. everybody and welcome back to Android Central Live. We are here at the Samsung Developers Conference in San Francisco. I am Phil Nickinson. This is Phil Byrne. Philip Byrne from Samsung. Remind me of your official title now. I am Marketing Manager, comma, Technical Media for Samsung Mobile. You're now the man. Philip actually started out like us, a humble blogger. Uh, remind me, I'm mm -hmm. trying to remember where all you were because you were... I was, I started with InfoSync World, right. the now defunct InfoSync World. I worked for PhoneScoop. I did a little bit with Slash Gear. Ten years ago, I worked for PC Magazine and a whole bunch of other sites. So yep. you've been around, you've seen stuff. You I know have. what it is we do. I've and, seen everything. And now your job is to lie to me and tell me to love your products? I don't lie to anybody. My <laughs> job is to keep other people from lying to you. <laughs> yeah. So now you are... Uh, I don't want to say product product demos. That's mm -hmm. you know, a very tiny bit of what you do. I run the reviews program at Samsung, mm -hmm. so I make sure reviewers are getting their review units. I write the reviewer's guides so that they know what's cool about our products. Uh, whenever someone's showing off cool toys, I try to be there to tell people what's cool about them. And um, yeah, that's what I do. And you're really just on the mobile space, right? So like we got a Samsung yep. Chromebook. Do you deal with those? No, like, not the Chromebooks, unfortunately. I do phones, tablets, cameras, watches, things like that. Anything running Android or Windows phone, I'll take care of for sure. All right, so obviously you love all Samsung products. Mm -hmm. What is actually like your favorite? Mm -hmm. Philip Byrne, nobody, nobody's watching this. There are no cameras. What do you like the most out of your line of products? That all right, so my newest stuff, because the newest stuff is always the best stuff. Um, I've been surprised at how much I like the Note 3. Mm -hmm. Usually when I get a new product like the Note 3, I'll still carry my last generation Galaxy S, whatever it is. Uh, this time I put that all aside. The only thing I'm carrying right now is my Galaxy Note 3. It does everything I want. It's smaller and lighter, so I really like that. It's funny how it doesn't feel as big as like Notes used to, and part of yep. it is it's slimmer and it's sleeker, and it, it that, really does feel nice. That is Samsung magic. Smaller, <laughs> thinner, lighter, but bigger at right. the same time. It's like a TARDIS. It's just bigger on the inside and I think somehow. Because I've also been using the HTC Max, which is, Matt, is ginormous. I have no idea what that is. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just completely clueless. You're wearing a Galaxy Gear as well. I am, yeah. I, I put mine up here for I, show I and tell. picked out the oatmeal beige gear. This is my, my personal one Dude, that I thought would match everything nicely. It's a white watch. It's not oatmeal. Well, it's slightly, look, see this is white and okay, it's fine. kind of slightly off-white. Right. So, yeah, yeah. But the orange grows on me I a lot. I like the orange yeah. a lot. Yeah, I think lime green is poorly named. I think it's not quite lime. It's more lime than lime <laughs> green. It, is it ro was it rose gold? Rose gold. That's a good one. Yeah, it's nice. that's very popular on on inside on my own team inside. Lots of people picking mm -hmm. up the rose gold one. They like that a lot. Is but that is that a ladies' watch or? You know, I want to say it's a ladies' watch, yeah. but I find it appealing, and I you know, pink is kind of my thing too. And I do it, know some men inside I would, I would who call picked it. Pink. It. I mean, it's subtle. It's soft. It's pinkish. Pinkish. Yeah, pinkish yeah. gold for sure. Yep. Cool. Yep. 
Um, you've got, you, we were talking about cameras a second mm -hmm. ago. Yeah, and, yeah. And I got to play with these in uh, Berlin mm -hmm. at IFA. Yep. Whole yep. new line of cameras. Actually, they were announced earlier in the summer. There is some crazy camera stuff coming. I was just at the Photo Plus trade show in New York City. Mm -hmm. I was showing off the Galaxy S4 Zoom, but our digital imaging folks were showing off the Galaxy NX, and I managed to snatch one of those, and it is mind-blowing. It is, it's our nicest camera that we've ever made, the NX300 and our, one of our nicest phones is basically a Galaxy S4 slapped onto a Galaxy uh, or an NX300 right. and the best of everything LTE coverage I mean, it's, it's not a cheap you know point and shoot no, camera or anything it's quite expensive yeah. yeah it's about 16 to 1700 depending on whether you get the kit lens and everything yep. but you know we 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 pull out all the stops we spare no expense it is the best of everything that we make and so you know, for, it's not going to be for everybody, but for people who can can spare that kind of money, it's it's definitely going to give you what you want. You think it's, it's too a really much, nice camera. It, is it too much camera? I mean, I'm using a, a Nikon D700. That's too much mm -hmm. camera for me. Would, it, would this be too yeah. much for me as well? No, or, not at all. I'm using a Nikon D7000 besides this, and that's, that's a step down. It's a more of a beginner's camera than the 700. And, you know, the nice thing about Android is you keep all the camera stuff segmented to the camera app. You still get Instagram and Snapchat and Flickr and all that right. kind of stuff, but... One thing the Galaxy camera, the original Galaxy camera, couldn't do, you couldn't zoom with it. Right. Because app makers would have to throw that into their own app support for our zoom. But on the Galaxy NX, you can just twist the lens, it automatically zooms, you get the full, uh, the, the really nice sensor. You, so you're taking the best shots of anybody on Instagram in the entire world with the Galaxy NX. Phones have been, been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You've got the Note 3, you've got the Mega, which is bigger than this, and this is pretty damn big. Yep. Yep. Do you ever think, and I'm not asking you to announce new products, but you can totally do that here if you want. Yes, yes. Do you ever see it coming back to high spec phones and smaller, and, and understanding their physical limitations to what you can do sometimes, be it thermal, be it just whatever. Um, do you ever see high end phones coming back to, you know, four, three, four, five? You're not the first person who's asked me that, mm -hmm. obviously. I hear that a lot. Um, what I can say, I don't know about uh, whether we're going to be making phones that are going to be smaller than what we have now, but uh, we follow consumer preferences and consumer research, and what we see is three years ago, everyone said the perfect phone size was 4.3 inches. The next year, 4.5 inches. Yep. Next year, 4.7 inches. It is literally a linear path going up for what people want in their phones. There's so much more you can do with a larger phone. Once you've had a larger phone, it's much harder to go back to a smaller phone. We find that a lot. So do I think that there are a specific group of people calling for a flagship phone that's four inches big? Sure, I've heard those people talk, but I don't think I would be able to carry one anymore, so I can't say if we're going to make one. You know, it's only been three years since we saw the first, like, 4.3-inch phones. Mm -hmm. And granted, they were a lot thicker than what we have now, but, yeah, but it's yeah. only been three years. I remember when the Infuse came out, and it was a 4.5-inch phone, and it mm -hmm. felt like the biggest thing I'd ever seen. It was very light, but it was still just massive, yep. and now that's a totally average and it had that phone. hump coming out the back of it. Actually, yes, I like that humps. phone a lot, actually. You like the hump? I used that for a while. Yeah, yeah. you're a hump man? Yeah, okay. it, it depends on what day it is. I okay, think. Yeah, 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 good. What else? Watches, smartwatches. Uh -huh. We're kind of we're all looking for the next big thing, right? So obviously glasses are wearables, you know, just the entire space. Yep, yep. How, how do you see people responding when they see mm -hmm. the Galaxy Gear? We, we've seen headlines this week saying a 30% return rate. Um, I, you know, I, I have my own quibbles with this. I mean, mainly on the software side, I think, and that's mm -hmm. stuff that can be fixed. And again, Gen 1 product, it's pretty early. So I don't want to let Samsung off the hook on that. I think there's a lot that needs to be done. Sure. But I think there's a lot to be excited about as well. I think the interesting thing about watches is it's sort of the intangibles that people aren't quite getting into. You can ask, what does it do? And then you get the list of features. And just like when tablets came out, there was a lot of people saying, why do I need this? Why do I care? What does it do that I couldn't do before? It's not about all the new things it can do. It's about the experience that you have when you're doing these things that's just better on the watch than it was with just the phone. So, you know, people say to me, what do you like best about the watch? I like that I don't take my phone out at dinner. Mm -hmm. I like that I, when I'm at a movie, I can quickly glance at my watch. I can check my texts and email messages, get back to what I'm doing. I don't have to light up the entire, I mean, phones are so big and so bright. I don't have to light up the entire theater with my phone mm -hmm. just to quickly check what's going on. I make phone calls on it a lot more than I thought. Really? I, I never thought I would make phone calls on it. <laughs> and then one day I was in my closet and I'm rearranging clothes and I get a phone call and I just, I don't want to hold my phone to my ear and I don't want to stop what I'm doing. And I just take the call and 
at the end I said, hey, did you know you're talking to me on my watch? And the person said, <laughs> no, no idea. And so I thought, well, now I can start taking phone calls on my watch. I was at a, a birthday party for mm -hmm. a bunch of uh, seven-year-old girls from my daughter's soccer team. Yep. And, and I took their picture with it, just sitting there like, you know, like that. And they yep. thought it was the coolest thing. Yep. Really? Yep. It was great. It was awesome. I was at a petting zoo at the Texas State <laughs> Fair, and I'm videotaping my son petting like the llamas and the giraffe at the State Fair. And people were just, um, you're taking a photo with your watch? And it doesn't seem amazing to me. I've had this for weeks right. now. But yeah. people were just completely floored that, you know, you can actually do that on a, a phone now. And the cool thing is, you know, it's nice to take photos with it. But I've seen apps that use, um, like, uh, Runtastic, I think. Or no, MyFitnessPal takes a photo of a barcode. So if you eat a Snickers bar, you take a photo of the barcode, and it gets all the nutritional information and adds that to your daily values. Um, Vivino is amazing. It takes a photo of a wine label, not a barcode, the label. Oh, that's right, yes. And it does a really good job. And then you can see food pairings and reviews and pricing and everything like that. So I want people to use the camera more for like utility purposes. Mm -hmm. I use it with Evernote. Like I pass by a restaurant and I say, oh, I want to remember to go to that restaurant. And I take a quick photo and now I remember it. It's a nice, easy way to remember something. It's not going to replace even a smartphone camera. Oh, no, hope not. Yeah, no, smartphone cameras are getting better and better. I'm a guy who carries an even nicer camera with me most times. Right. So there'll always be room for the really nice photos and then the quick snapshots on your phone. And then the gear is sort of, you know, your, your baseline. I need to remember this quick photo. Don't want to take my phone out. You know, look, there's Sasquatch. Kind of take that quick picture quickly. And we haven't even really seen people hacking this too much yet. I know everyone. Not enough. They discovered right? you can load Android apps onto a device that runs Android. Right, Fine. right. Debug um, mode was very popular there for about a week. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, you know, I'd, it's not something we're officially encouraging. Am I going to be monitoring the XDA boards? Of course. I'd like to see what people do with it. I can't wait to see when the developer community really gets their, their claws into it. Mm -hmm. um, I hope we kind of keep supporting more and more, but I'm very curious to see where it goes. I'm, I'm excited for that. Well, thank you very much for hanging out with us. Always my pleasure. You. Yeah, I was just telling was Christina Warren, we have all these friends who we see like once every four months. I run I into everyone you but you. I know. Yep. It's been a while. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for hanging out with the us. The reunion of the Phils. That's right. There we are. We'll do it again sometime. Next time with a beer, maybe. Yeah, yeah, right now. What are you doing now? Let's We're, go. We are Let's so go. doing this entire thing wrong. So thank you guys for hanging out, and uh, we'll be back. Are we doing another one? More coming up. We got more coming up. Rest of the show? <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually. You wouldn't believe the things I talk about in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what we're doing tonight. But. Tonight, I'm hanging out with friends with babies. Are you going to be around tomorrow? Yeah. 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 We'll I'm not leaving until late tomorrow night. Yeah. So. Yeah. And if you're free for lunch, I can get away for lunch. Cool. You going to be the same spot tomorrow? <laughs> yes. Do you like beer? Are you a beer man? Oh, yeah. There's a really amazing beer bar that used to be just open near here. Oh, really? Yeah. Fantastic. You had me at beer. I know. <laughs> Beer's good. This can be good. We're going to dump you with a thirsty bear or something. Yep. No, yeah, right in front of the air. It was a problem. Step forward just a little. Andrew, don't block him out. Such a big no, Stop. <laughs> I've got broad shoulders, man. I don't know. You're a big, manly man. Um, well, you, then. You don't want us looking at the cameras, I'm guessing, right? You guys just talk amongst yourselves. No, don't yourself. worry about Good. it. Keep it conversational. Here's cool. the topic the Civil War. Was it really civil? Was it really a war? Okay, let's see. That one, hopefully. And don't look directly at the lights if you can help it help okay. your vision. Cool. Yeah, if you look at the lights, you won't be able to see anything else. Cool. Except for spots. Yes, indeed. <laughs> How are the cameras looking yeah. Yeah, other than this one? Yeah, we've got it. Well, I don't know. Philip's tall. Do you guys have any kind of app or anything that we need to show off? We have a website, challengepost.com. Challengepost.com. That's right. Don't worry about it. No problem. But no biggie, guys. 
the two yeah, the shirts will yeah i think the shirts give a good call <laughs> and you know we've got plenty to talk about we're going to be talking about what you guys do so yeah yeah no, i'm looking forward to it absolutely you ready for everything else should do like one of these okay you guys ready yeah sure we're about to go full throttle on this biatch <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to. I'm cutting off the video. Oh God! Just give me the. Hey, I'm just going with the John as I say. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're at Android Central Live, SDC 13. We've got a couple more people to talk to. Of course, you can tell by the shirts, we have guys from Challenge Post here, Brandon and Brian, if I recall correctly. So you guys are uh, partnering up with Samsung. You're running uh, the happy hour event tonight. What exactly is Challenge Post? Kind of give us the, the quick overview for somebody who hasn't heard of you guys. Sure, Challenge Post is a website, challengepost.com. And on that, you'll find software competitions from companies like Samsung and a bunch of other companies and government agencies and right. even other developers. And they're challenging software developers to build software and show off their software. So just any software developer can say, you know, go to challengepost.com. They can look at the open challenges and just get in on it. They don't have to have any kind of affiliation or anything like that? Nope. Almost all the challenges we've ever powered are free. Okay. And not only do you get exposure for your software, and you get to keep all of the intellectual property, um, but if you win, you also get additional prizes and discovery and business deals and all kinds of other cool stuff, uh, including challenges we powered with Samsung. Right, right. So somebody like Samsung will say, okay, we you know, have X service we want to put up, or we you know, want people to integrate with you know, this API. Um, what kind of prizes are they you know, putting out there? So it's, it's all over the map. Uh, so we, to go back a step, so we do two different things, right? We do in-person hackathons, which are okay. like one to three days, sort of build a prototype and have some fun, and then longer online challenges that are going to usually have much bigger prizes because they're targeting right. higher level app developers. Right, and that'll be like whole uh, groups of people working together for a, a single goal? Yeah, or to build a single app or a product. Okay. Right, right, and right. the prizes, uh, to your question, the, you, there can be hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash prizes. Wow, okay. Um, but also um, other kinds of prizes, like getting exposure, getting to meet people. So for example, today we're here at the SDC 13. Uh, the big keynote, they had this company up called Movil, M-O-V-L. They entered our first challenge with Samsung to build apps on their smart TVs. Right, which we saw a whole lot about that in the, in the keynote. Yeah, and they, and they won. And then the second year, Samsung asked them to provide their tools to others who would enter, and then this year Samsung bought them. So that's okay. a good example of something right. so out of the money. Right, so maybe it's not just that short-term goal of, you know, winning, you know, $100,000 or something would be fantastic, but, you know, being picked up as an employee or, you know, per having your, your company purchased is obviously, you know, infinitely more valuable, of course. Yeah. Right. So you guys, of course, you work with somebody like Samsung. You know, uh, I'm assuming you guys work all the way down to uh, a lower level group that's just, you know, looking for something simple or trying to bring on some lower level people. Yeah, so we do lots of college hackathons where okay. it's about getting people together to have fun and learn new skills and make friends that could potentially be business partners. Right. Um, lots of it's cause based, more about organizations. So like Michelle Obama's Let's Move initiative did apps for healthy kids to help kids better manage their nutrition and exercise more. And okay. Then, so it, so it could be, you know, any kind of cause. So maybe if you're, even if you're not interested in the uh, in the prize or something, you just want to develop something that could help somebody else, or you know, go towards you know something that you're really interested in. Sure. Yeah, and you can drink a lot of beer too. Right. So college hackathons. Exactly. That's college hackathons have to include alcohol. We check ID. 
Everyone's 21. Everyone's of course. 21. For 72 hours. Oh, yes, of course. At all the college hackathons. Sure. Right. And if you're going to be up for hours and hours on end, you know, I mean, maybe you want to start it off with some beer and maybe trail off after that. So do you guys, with your hackathons, are these like three days straight, people aren't sleeping, they're like drinking Red Bulls and eating cookies or something? Is that kind of, kind you know, of that's what they, you think of when you think hackathon, right? Pretty pretty much right, but they, you know, they also get good eight to 10 hours sleep, wouldn't you say, at the same time, probably? And Some, not in the, It's pretty okay. well taken care of and responsible. They spend more time hacking and less time sleeping, I think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think so. I, there's a lot of like glory over this, like spend right. three days up, build the best thing, but it's probably not the yeah. most productive. There's lawyers in the room, so People I just want to be careful. Oh, we, right. we encourage, yeah, we encourage yeah. sleeping. Yeah. Exactly, and it's, you know, hey, they're doing it under their own own power, right? So sure. that, that's all about, I'm sure you guys see that once you provide an incentive for something, then all of a sudden people have direction you know it's not just saying build something it's saying we kind of want you to do this sort of thing so how how directed is it can it can it be kind of wide like build us something that has to do with you know a fitness app or is it going to be you know, integrate with this exact API. How, how do uh, the people determine that? Yeah, so um, I can tell you about a very specific one. Sure. Um, the FTC, you ever got a robocall? Somebody oh. calls you, a legal robocall? All the time. This is really annoying, right? Yeah. So the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission said, we want to stop these, we want to block illegal robocalls, so create software to do it. And they did, and the winner, a single developer in New York, um, just published his software. He was all over the press. Today show right. like 160,000 downloads in one day. And that's a very specific problem that got stopped through a challenge, but then there's also really open-ended ones. I don't know, what do, you, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, so slightly more open-ended, we've done apps to help teachers better manage their classrooms with New York okay, City sure. schools, and maybe we'll give a few different problem statements. Like you could tackle it one of these 10 ways right. and sort of provide some inspiration or a company like Evernote, where it's a note-taking app, mm -hmm. and it's sort of the best use of their platform, and there's a super wide range, and we leave it way. Right, of it. course, if you give somebody the tools to integrate with something like Evernote, it's, you know, they kind of want to see the, like, sky's the limit kind of side of things, right? Right. Yeah. Right, right. You could organize all of your beers in Evernote and then <laughs> exactly. export them through an API. Yeah, a list app. of upcoming hackathons or something like that. Brandon's Absolutely. very thirsty. Yeah, very yeah. that's thirsty. right. Well, did you know we're actually throwing a, a happy you, hour? You did mention that. <laughs> Five o'clock. I think they're actually all probably there right now drinking without us, but that's okay. Right. We're, so we're, anybody that's we're watching, watching watching live that doesn't happen to be, you know, they could be watching live from the happy hour, you know, right. could by be. chance. But, it, but if they're here, where do they go uh, to get in on that? A couple doors down. <laughs> <laughs> the Georgian room? I hope that's right. Exactly. I think all right, it's Georgian, Georgian room sounds yeah, right. Yeah. sounds good. Well, yeah. we'll let you guys go get yeah. on to that and, uh, you know, go partake in some beers and, cool. uh, you know, talk to the developers. But in all cool. seriousness, uh, any developers that are watching, anybody out there um, who's interested in making something that solves a problem or getting exposure for their software, wants to make an impact and get discovered, um, check out challengepost.com when you get a chance and we hope that you participate. All right, fantastic. Thank Brandon. You. Brian, it's great to talk to you Thanks, guys. Man. Thanks, Yep. All right, we'll be coming back uh, with more interesting people, more interviews at SDC 13.
funny one. Ah, J'essaye. Mm -hmm. Just point on kind of me, I'll be zooming in on them from here. Can you readjust camera two a little bit? If, if you kind of cheat towards that way, yeah. Nope, that's okay. There. Uh, correct. Is that going to be okay? Yeah. Good. It's funny. But you don't have to talk so much about knock knocking off things. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Samsung Developers Conference. I'm Phil Nickinson with Android Central and Android Central Live, because that's what we're doing here. And we have Nicholas from armdevices.net. Now, you are from Denmark, you said? Yeah, Denmark, Switzerland. Denmark and Switzerland, but you spend a lot of time in China, and that's what this big pile of stuff here yeah, comes so from. Yeah, so like 20 minutes before I left uh -huh. uh, a couple days ago, and I was coming over here for this developer conference here at Samsung, and uh, tomorrow also uh, uh, the ARM technology conference, where this might be announcing some new ARM processor. But I just thought, it, why buy two or three samples? I just bought 20. And this fits in nicely because we're talking about, what, 1,400 people here at the Samsung Developers Conference from 33 countries. You're bringing all this stuff from China, so these are not, these are not Samsung phones. So, so here I have an iPhone 5S uh, here, and you can see, uh, you can see right here, I'm going to unlock it. iPhone 5S for $50, running Android 4.2.2 <laughs> on a dual-core ARM Cortex-A7. And... Uh, Check it out. How, it's not. It's it is surprising. I mean, as soon as you pick it up, you know it's not an iPhone because it's so light. It's it's plastic, and it's running Android. <laughs> this is bizarre. They should add rocks inside or something to add the weight. They really to should. Have the yeah. Same, to ha add some kind of fake metal. So <laughs> I don't know what, but uh, but it's fifty dollar uh, dual core. So for fifty dollar, you get an iPhone 5s or even an iPhone uh, 5c for like one dollar less. It's not a hundred dollar difference, it's one dollar. And then uh, if you want 3G, it's like $15 more, 10, $15 more, then you have 3G. This is 2G for $50. This one is actually a 3G, uh, the, this, this one, for example. All right, so, so this one says Galaxy Note 3. It looks yeah. a little off. Is it an actual Galaxy Note 3? I don't know. You what don't do you think? Know. I don't know. I, I don't have a real one because... Uh, There's a real one. There is a real one. So let's try to, let's try to see. See, uh, if I, see if I can spot some differences. Well, it helps when I hold it right side up. You know what should really give it away is the, uh, the lack of the Samsung logo on the front, I think. Um, I can definitely see, I think, a yeah, uh, the flash is different. The stitching is different. So, yeah, this one is definitely fake. Michael's is real, which but is it's, good. It's, for, it's $43. Uh, but uh, where did I put the battery? Uh, I forgot to put the battery in this one. I haven't one. seen the battery. Okay, but uh, it's a single core Cortex A5 uh, spread from CPU. So basically, it's the PCBs are coming out of China and they just put them in the phone, and it doesn't matter how the design is, every design would work. Kind so of. here is an HTM. HTM, not HTC. Here, this, is, this one. You can see the, the, the battery in this one. It's a. Uh, 41 megapixels. Now we know there's a 41 megapixel camera out there, not by HTM, whoever that is. But wait for it; it's running Android. So oh, check, again. check this out. This is 36 dollars, and you have a Windows Phone copy. So this is it looks like Windows Phone, but it's running on Android. So did they have it? Uh, let's go back. You have this even this UI. I guess it's kind of a famous Windows Phone copy mm -hmm. UI. I guess. But uh, this is what they ship by default <laughs> on a Nokia-looking device for $36, uh, single-core Cortex-A5 uh, with, with 2G only for $36. But $36, and the cheapest one I found is $29. But this is 4-inch. Here's another Samsung look-alike. Looks like a, is that supposed to be a, a GS4 or a GS3? Yeah, GS4. Four. So this is a $75, something like that, and then you get a 5-inch. Uh, WVGA, and it's with a dual core cort uh, Cortex A7, the MediaTek 6572, and uh, dual SIM. All this is dual SIM. There's no single SIM in China because 
the, the price difference is a little bit of plastic. So, you know, uh, the, 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 all the modems support dual SIM by default. It's another non-Galaxy Note 3, Note 3. What else you got? So uh, my, my main phone right now is uh, this, this one. Uh, this is an e so you're, you're actually using these. You're not just like collecting these. You use these as your phones. Yeah, I, I was using a $80, $87 phone as my main phone for a whole year until I switched to the Galaxy Nexus. Mm -hmm. So until February last year, I had the Shenzhen, but now I have Galaxy Nexus. I'll probably get a, a Nexus 5, but that's just me. You know, I, this, this is, this, I mean, this is cool. I, I might, you know, I would like to have e-ink on the back of my phone, right? right. But, here, but here you have a... Uh, hold that up for John to see. Here you have e-ink, Android. So... And the refresh isn't, you know, quick, but the, the icons could look worse, I suppose. Yeah, I mean... Uh, How long does this battery last? So it lasts two weeks. Uh, you, two weeks? Two weeks for an Android phone, uh, in normal use, use, use case, and you have a front light that you can turn up and down, and uh, it's Android. And this, this company is a Chinese company, it's called Onyx. They showed me the first Android 4.0 on the Cortex-A9. So here you have Android on e-ink. Uh, I mean, this is what Kindle should have been, you know? Let people install applications on your <laughs> e-readers, right? And here is just, uh, the, the, the reason is you can have an application to have all school books or all kinds of, you know, like uh, libraries and stuff. And, mm -hmm. An alternative content, the, uh, you can just click and you have a whole new, you have Amazon store on here, of course, because it's Android, but you can have all the other ones too. And that's why it's Android. It's pretty funny. It's uh, funny. Let's see, HP Chromebook, is this real? Yeah, it's fake? so. Uh, I can't tell, I haven't seen it. Have you, tr have you haven't seen it yet? No, I haven't used the, uh, the new one. I mean, no, that's the real one. Yeah, yeah, it looks nice. All right, so that's real. So you're throwing me off by throwing something in that's real. Yeah, just because over here, I went to Best Buy, I bought the last one that was in stock. Uh, There's only a blue one. I'm a little bit disappointed it's not an uh, octa-core mm. CPU because this is exactly the same CPU as last year's uh, Samsung Chromebook. But who knows, maybe next month, maybe somebody like Samsung might have a 13.3 inch ultrabook killer ARM-powered laptop. I, I mean, I'm, I'm really a fan of the ARM-powered laptop and I would like to see all these Shenzhen guys get into that game too. But right now, they're only doing Android stuff. Right. Now, what is this appendage coming out of your body here? So uh, since uh, January, since CES, I do uh, 800 videos on my website. Every fair I do with Steadicam, just to get uh, steady videos, mm -hmm. supposedly. I mean, cool. Kind of. Anything else you want to show us? Uh, this, let me just uh, check it out. Uh, <laughs> on my website, there's lots of videos in the factories where they make stuff, where oh, they cool. make the, 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 the tablets, uh, stuff like that, so you can check that out. And again, that's armdevices.net. Yeah, and I try to do interviews next week uh, with all the arm makers, the the big guys, like uh, the, maybe Samsung is launching something, or at least ARM might be launching some new ARM CPUs to kill Intel, but don't tell Intel. <laughs> or Intel might be making ARM CPUs and might announce ARM CPUs very soon. <laughs> I think it's very probable because AMD supposedly is coming with tablet CPUs too. It's like a rumor going on. They, ha they are doing ARM processors for servers, probably also for tablets and all that stuff. Well, thanks for stopping by. Cool. We'll be back with more here in a little bit from the uh, Samsung Developers Conference. All right. The, I know, right? Does your website want to have one of those? No, review a test or no, no, you hang on to them. We've got... Because I have eight of those. We've what hit, if that? you've got... Eight
through this and then crush one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah. John. So this French guy is a blogger, right? It, it seems. Yeah, yeah. For uh, uh, my understanding, a uh, site about phones that run ARM processors. So everything. <laughs> and you know, you saw you have like, you know the 50 I phones. Definitely want to chat with China, him. China, right? And they're all those knockoff look-alike ones. So really and he he, cool. he really thinks I look like a French actor, but I have no idea what the name is. Oh. So we need to catch up. <laughs> Yeah, to get up to speed with your, it's like uh, you look like your French actor references. Well, it's been a while since I left France, so. I'm not up, up on my American actor references. Oh either, man, so. connect charger. Uh, so he's going to be showing off stuff on the phone. What's the best way to? Point it at me, and don't move it around much, much because I'm going to zoom it in. So if right. so, what would also what would work really well is if when you go to show it, if you just prop it on the, on the table. Prop on the table, that'll right. keep you from moving it too much. Right, that's true. And then I can, and I can zoom nice and tight. And I just can leave the Chromebook or I can get rid of it. But Let me see, just because I'm a... Are no. you a lefty, is that cool? Yeah, so that's good, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. So he's gonna be shooting with this one here. Okay. Um, I'm just so concerned about the, <laughs> the battery. It's gonna, That's all right. We'll see. We're, we're going to do uh, an intro and stuff like that. and then. OK, so I can put it here for now. Yep, yep. yep. So when you're ready, I'll just, I mean, you just don't pay any attention to us. You guys just talk. Right. So I when you show that, just point it this direction, I'll get it. So okay. yep. I look at you or look at you? Yeah, you look at him. You guys just chat. OK. Yep. Yep, and as long as that's there, oh, man. it'll you know it'll okay. it'll show off. But All right. you got just you got a little that. bit this way, so that we're kind of yelling. Kinda it, right. No, it was just for the. Right. There you go. I'm not that's sure I'm gonna do so that. I'm gonna clean off the screen yeah. here too, really quick. Okay. Help out a little bit, maybe with the glare and stuff like that. But just to help out with the glare, I think I was just gonna. Okay. I think it'll be all right. All right, Ken, are we okay with the camera? Yeah. Hey. So. SDC 13 is the app, right? Or is it uh, Sam Samsung developer? The, it app? doesn't have a name for this. It, the name is Topi, right? We just right. customize it for, for this event. So okay. call it whatever. It's the, cool. the event app right. for, right. for it SDC. It says SDC 13 at the top. So. Yeah. Well, we had to give it a name. Right. Of course. So yeah, that's, that's that. Cool. Okay, we ready? Hey guys, it's Andrew with Android Central and we're live at SDC 13 and we're bringing you a, uh, another interesting person that's here and you're uh, David with Topi and uh, you're fundamental really in people connecting at SDC 13. You customized your app uh, for Samsung to help people find their way around but also uh, connect. So kind of tell us about it and we're going to show it off a little bit for uh, those who are interested. Yeah, so absolutely. We we uh, we've developed uh, we developed Topi, which is an application for uh, attendees to network efficiently at conferences. When you go to right. an event, definitely what you want to do is get you know as much information as possible. But a, a very strong element of you wanting to go to an event mm -hmm. is to network, to find right. new business partners, friends, developers, whatever. Right. And exchanging business cards works, but then you know what happens after that, right? It's kind of it. It makes more sense. We all have the phones on us to to get connected there and then continue the conversation, right? Absolutely, so that's that's number one. Number two is also, it's kind of awkward to just walk around and check out each other's names. And it's <laughs> right, just right. awkward and not efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you wanna kind of show us the interface here? Uh, it's, it's pretty simple, it's kind of in the, um, you know, you have your public side and your private side. So how exactly does that work on Topi? So the public, uh, the public side, um, I'm gonna show you right away. There we go. So you have, sorry, you really have two tabs mostly. Um, on the first tab, these are the public conversations. These are suggested to you by Topi based on your profile and that of other attendees. So okay. for example, this is where we hope you will break the ice uh, as easily as possible. Right, right. So, so grouping you together with people that 
you know, maybe worked at similar companies or have similar interests. Of course, you know, internet and technology is going to have, you know, a huge grouping at a conference like this. But that could be um, anything for any kind of conference, right? It could be anything. It could be also your hometown. For, so for example, I'm French. If there's a bunch of French people, I'm, I'm going to see something France. Great. Uh, it could be my meetup memberships. It could be a, a lot of stuff. Whatever is emotional and you feel connected to, we're going to try to group you with people who share the same interests. Awesome. So when we hop into maybe the technology section, um, anybody can just talk to anybody else and kind of just get to know each other? It's exactly the idea. So, oh, sorry, I went to the Google one, but as you can see, the interface is should you know feel uh, very natural. You can send pictures, you can send little uh, sketches, doodles. Right. You can do a lot of stuff. I see you can share your location there. So, uh, you find somebody in here and say, oh, you know, maybe I want to pitch you on this idea, or maybe you know we want to work together or something. You can meet up uh, uh, on location too. Yes, exactly. Or you can send voice. It seems very natural, but that's the whole idea. So you don't even. Um, you can choose to join uh, to join a group like this. It, you automatically join it based on your profile. Great, mm -hmm. great. And so then, if you do meet somebody, and you know maybe you don't want to talk into you know 18 different people in technology, you can go over to a private group too, right? Absolutely. So that's we try to emulate what happens in real life, right? You start listening in in one of the conversations happening in technology, for example. Then you start chiming in, and then maybe there's a couple of people that you hit it off with, in which case you can click on their profile and just continue the conversation in a private setting. Right. And then you can check out their profile. You could actually... And so that's all uh, information that they submitted, right? So you build your profile first, and then uh, you can let every, everybody else see that as well. Exactly. So the way it works is you usually log in via Facebook or LinkedIn or okay. a registration uh, information that was given to you by the, right. by the organizer. Then you can link any existing social network, LinkedIn, Meetup, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Whatever. And then that lets it branch out from there as well. Then you can you know, friend each other on Facebook or make the contacts on LinkedIn from there as well, right? So Absolutely. this is really supposed to be, I think an icebreaker is probably the best way to put it. But. Um, of course, like uh, at a big conference like SDC, uh, you have a way to navigate around the conference and everything like that. So that's just right inside the app as well? Yes. So let me go back to it. So the main screens really focus on, on engagement, conversations right, around attendees. Right, that's clearly the main, the main focus of yes. the app. But we also don't want you to be carrying around like 10 pound you know, bags of stuff. <laughs> of course, so yeah. Or the little fold out map. you know. Exactly, or the little fold out map. So if you wanted to know what's happening, you can see a map of you know both floors right here and if you want to know what's happening right now you can just tap and you see the information about the great, session great yeah and for a conference like this where you know it's on different floors and all the different sessions are going on it's uh, you you said that you can share when you're at a uh, specific event as well right yes okay absolutely. so that's another way for you know, you can see like-minded people. If you're both at a smart TV uh, talk, then you can meet up afterwards or just chat and figure out what's going on. Exactly. So you see here, what you see here is the agenda. Um, you can just tap on any of the sessions, read the description, see who the, who the speaker is, and that sort of stuff. If you say, "Oh, I'm going," this is an interesting session. I'm going to attend it. What that's going to do in the background is it's going to group you with the other people who want to attend that session and you will be automatically able to chat with everybody attending okay, the session. Okay, cool. So you could you could have the like I said the smart TV group when exactly. that, that starts to build and there's no limit on the size of that group. It could really get going as much as you want. Up to 2 million users. So we Oh, okay. Now. So I think that'll that'll scale that'll a little scale. bit. So uh, as far as scaling goes, so have you guys done other extremely large conferences as well, or you know it goes uh, all the way in both directions? It, it, it went from 25 attendees, very C-level people in an healthcare company, to over 3,500 uh, attendees at this point. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a, a huge event. It could be for you know a weekend get together, like you said, you know, a locality or something like that. It really doesn't yep. matter. People have used it for birthday parties, bar mitzvah, for uh, small meetups in New York City. Okay. Really for anything. Right. So that and it's really um, I'm sure you guys have seen when you put it all into one app and it's you know your one stop place. You know you know what's going on. You're at this conference. 
you can just open this app. It's not open up this chat app, open this map, open up the website. It's all in one place. It's exactly what we're trying to do. We're bringing uh, elements of social networking and communications that make sense within the context of an event and put it all in one place. Mm -hmm. And it's great that you guys um, aggregate everything, right? That you said you can plug in your Facebook or LinkedIn and, you know, it's not like you have to rebuild your profile every single time that you go to an event. It's something that you can you know, install at the start and then you go from there. Absolutely, right? You don't want to recreate your event from scratch. Right. So do you guys have anything else uh, upcoming or interesting that you're willing to talk about? Maybe yes. you have a little bit of an interesting feature or something coming out? I think there's a very interesting feature that we are going to be demoing very soon. Sure. Um, so right now, the one thing that we do is we automatically sign you in based on your geolocation, oh, which great. is called geofencing, right? So organizers can go around and create as many geofences as they want for their event. And people, part of these geofences will be automatically signed in. Oh, great. So in a way, we're bringing people together regardless of where they are in the world. Number two, what we're really launching soon is step two, I would say. Now we're bringing people together geographically speaking. Now we're going to also enable them to speak whatever language they want and be understood by the others. So we're going to enable live translations within the app. Oh, that's great. So especially when you have, you know, a, a big group, you know, something like SDC, people are coming from, I think they said 33 countries, right? Yes. So in the future, you'll yeah. be able to, you know, type in French and then have it translated to somebody, you know, you know, we have Korean speakers that could figure it out, right? And it's exactly how that's it all just going to happen automatically. You hit the button translate, you speak in your mother tongue, and it will be translated into how many, you know, how many languages. Right, and language. that's something that's seriously important. You know, you talk about icebreakers, what happens when you walk up to somebody and you don't speak the same language, Absolutely, right? right? That's, and you can't assume everybody speaks English, so that's... Right, uh, of course, of course. We, that's, uh, that's the cool next feature that we're going to launch. Well, as somebody that goes to a lot of different conferences, this is something that, you know, we've seen a lot of bad conference apps and, you know, sometimes not at all. Like I said, the, the crinkled up map. Yes. And so something like this, something like Topi is, is amazing. So Thank we really much. appreciate you taking a few minutes to uh, talk about it and looking forward to that Translate feature. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Right. My pleasure. Thanks, David. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to be coming back with more uh, interesting speakers. I think we got one or two more for day one at SDC 13. Uh, hang on just a few minutes. Um, a couple different, uh, not a lot of people are doing that, but uh, I think um, one of the Japanese carriers was talking about doing that live translation stuff between different languages. And like they said, 33 different countries here, it's, you know, you have lots of languages they represented. It. They right, have right. It. it works really well. And especially when you're talking about Samsung, it's, you know, and we're in America, so it's, you know, English and Korean, Absolutely. you know, off, off the charts, of course. Yeah, we really appreciate it. It's awesome. Thanks yeah, thanks for, thanks for, uh, Letting us take a look, it's really interesting. Cool stuff. Well, awesome. Yeah, absolutely.
been 100 yards away, and now it's my kids. <laughs> and I missed Back them. Back to normality. Yeah, and I missed them. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. And I bet they missed you too. Yeah. Who do they ask for money and sweets and games and... Mom, because Dad says no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you should stick to that. <laughs> So do you have like a recommended time for this to last or just until you run dry? Or yeah, dry? yeah. We're, I mean, we're trying to keep it 15 minutes, no more than that. Oh but gosh, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think we've I can, hit that. I don't think I can talk Yeah, no, and, and neither yeah. can I, so. It, it's gone, it's been pretty fluid, so that's good. Good stuff. Yeah, let's Before keep it as short as possible. I'll leave your card. <laughs> All my good cards. So if this is live, what happens if I mess up? Uh, you keep going. I think we're on right now. Let's see. Yeah, see, there we are. Oh. Oh, yeah, but there's they... a big giant watermark on that. Can they hear us? Um, yeah, they can hear us now. Yeah. So we're just talking. I mean, we're just talking. That's all it is. I screw up all the time. I, I screw up for a living. So. <laughs> that sounds like a good job. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Uh, I was in newspapers for 11 years, and my job was to misspell words for a living, that's what I would say. Oh, that's the worst kind of journalism. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I don't do it on purpose, it just happens. What you got? My shiny. Yeah, where's makeup? You look that was last time. <laughs> pure, pure hotness, you don't need it. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. It doesn't really make any sense, though. <laughs> <laughs> No, we did. We all worked together for a week in May, and I had to be in full makeup every day. Oh, really? I bet that was tiring. I think women have to do that most days. I, <laughs> yes. I have no sympathy. Oh, I have lots of sympathy. Okay, guys, we're about to get ready. Yep. So you guys are just going to talk to each other. Ignore all of this. Yep. Okay. Yeah. No problem. You talk to Bill. And we'll give you the countdown. Hey there everybody, welcome back to Android Central Live, that's us. We are here at the Samsung Developers Conference at the Weston St. Francis in San Francisco. Now I have Amy Fleming here with uh, Chilingo. How's it going, are you having fun? I'm having an Is this your first time day. on camera like this? Um, kind of, yeah, just more officially with a nice backdrop, <laughs> yeah. But hopefully there'll be more opportunities. We're, we're very <laughs> low-key, it's just you and me, there's nobody else out there watching. Okay, so excellent. Just relax and enjoy yourself. I shall. So what have you guys seen here at, at Samsung's developer conference that is really piquing your interest? Well, unfortunately, we've been based outside the uh, main ballroom mm -hmm. area, just trying to gather some of the develop delegates' attention and let them know what we're about. More than, we've not really been to any talks as much as I would love to, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of good vibes going on. Everyone seems really energetic and I think Samsung have done a really good job in kidding the place out and created a good atmosphere. You know, 14, 1,500 people here, that's, that's Excellent certainly Excellent Did you see the lines before registration? Oh, it was insane, they were yeah. so busy. So for everybody at home who doesn't know what Chilingo is, give me like the, the 60 second spiel. Okay, um, I do work part of uh, for Chilingo, but we're actually here for a new initiative, which is co-funded by Chilingo and Samsung Apps. Okay. So basically, well, Samsung itself. Um, mm. Basically, we're encouraging independent developers to self-publish their games to the Samsung Apps marketplace. Gotcha. Um, and if they come through 100% indie, they get a high, the highest revenue share available currently in the market, and also opportunities for featuring and promotional tools via 100%indie.com and also via Samsung apps. When you say 100%, we're talking about 100% revenue, or what's um, the split at that point? Okay, so we initially started at 100% mm -hmm. revenue, um, but that expired after six months. Okay. So this following six months, we're at 90%, and then the whole of next year will be 80%. And that's still higher than the typical 70-30 you get in exactly. most every app store everywhere. Yeah, exactly. So we're, we're, we're trying to like foster the indie spirit. We're trying to give back to developers. It really is a... A, a, a no lose situation, I would like to describe it as. How many apps do you have in there now? Um, well, I don't, I couldn't tell you exact numbers, mm. but lots, and it's growing daily. We have a team back in the UK who are vetting games, and they get, you know, influctuated with so many different apps and games every day to push through the program. 
are games kind of the, you know, what you're targeting or just any Absolutely, app? Absolutely, yeah. Because we're Chilingo, mm -hmm. uh, really good p uh, publishers with our background um, in that area, we are, we are looking for games, yeah, to get the good quality ones on the, on the storefront. Cool. So how long has this been going on now? We launched in March, so really not that long. Mm -hmm. But if you look at you know, the history of it, you can see how much it's uh, grown and expanded within such a short period of time. And we've still got so much energy to keep it going <laughs> and you know, get, every, get more, and more, more and more people involved. Because I do really think, I know I work there, but I do really think it's a fantastic opportunity that people could potentially be missing out on. Because we're, we're self-publishing. Right. I must stress that. Like, we don't own any intellectual property. And we do, and it's non-exclusive, so we would encourage people to self-publish elsewhere because really we want your games to be as successful as possible. Why we, uh, so we're talking about self-publishing. How is that different from uploading to, say, Google Play or Amazon? It's or, not. It's okay. no different whatsoever. It's just another, another stream of revenue that you could be missing out on. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I mean, Samsung is famous for their hardware, mm -hmm. obviously. So we want to we wanna get that on par with the software opportunities. Hence why we're giving developers this opportunity to come to us and get, get the most out of it. Gotcha. Very cool. Very exciting. In fact, yeah. <laughs> I think I need to go upload our app there. Oh, we would love you to. See? Absolutely. I'm absolutely you know, we don't sell it for any. Do you do free apps too, or is it all just paid apps? Yeah, we, we have yeah. an app purchases SDK that you can mm -hmm. implement too. So no, it's like paid games or free games. We would encourage anyone to come and speak to us. We're also a website, um, which... Plug it, plug it. Yeah, website, 100percentindie.com, where people can come and just read about the industry in general, whether you're a gamer or a developer. Uh, we've got a very dedicated editorial team back in England, mm -hmm. and they... You know, any news or any, we're always looking for people to contribute to that, mm -hmm. industry experts or one man developers in their bedroom just with not much else to do. So you'll help <laughs> with marketing promotion a little bit. Yeah, beyond totally. All for free. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you very much yeah, for hanging out no with problem. us. Thank you so much for taking your time. We'll be around all this week. Excellent. So that is <laughs> just about it for today. I think we've been going for 12, 13, no, we've been going for, <laughs> I, I think, three hours today. We're going to do three hours on Tuesday. So definitely check back with us, and we'll be replaying stuff all week, forever. You can watch this until the end of time. So uh, for Android be. Central Live, and for Amy, and for Chilingo, and 100% Indie.com, indie. Indie. Yep. that's it for today. And uh, we'll catch you all on Tuesday from the Samsung Developers Conference in San Francisco.